Like a lot of people, I think LeetCode is a total waste of everybody's time. It provides no business value, isn't an indicator of success, and is a waste of interview time that could be spent actually evaluating valuable candidates. That's because most of data engineering isn't technical. So don't waste your time studying code puzzles. Spend it understanding how you can present yourself as an asset they can't refuse. My coding skills are competent. I can Python when needed. I can SQL just about anything. I know what I need to know to get the job done well. But what I'm not going to do is dazzle you with code wizardry. But despite being what I'd call a mediocre programmer, I've always gotten glowing reviews, praise from teammates and management, frequent poaching attempts from competitors, and most importantly, I've gotten the jobs that I really wanted to get. And I've done that because in any technical field, the first year or so is all about proving your technical abilities. After that, it's all about your ability to pick things up quickly, your willingness to grow, your soft skills, your understanding of the larger engineering picture. If you take a survey of data engineering managers and leads and ask them what their top problems are, you're gonna hear struggles with technical debt, difficult stakeholders, directionless leadership, unrealistic timelines, infrastructure issues, budget restraints, being a second-class citizen compared to other software teams, ineffective processes, poor documentation, poor requirements, and so on. What you probably won't hear is, oh man, our code is awful, we really need a top coder to fix it all up. So if you roll into an interview and all you have to offer is acing a code quiz, have you shown anyone that you can solve their actual problems? No. Sure, if everybody else failed the code test miserably, then you might get the job. Or maybe it's one of those managers who doesn't know anything about hiring other than just giving a code test. But that's not going to be a very reliable interview strategy, especially if you're aiming at a quality company. So maybe it's time to tailor your interviewing towards being the person who can solve some of the problems the team is facing. So there's three areas you can focus on to prove value beyond just being another person who studied leak code business value, process, and leadership. During the interview, you may not get questions directly to answer about business value. So you need to use whatever they ask you to show it. If they ask you, how do you build a data pipeline? You could start with ID this data source, establish connection, etc. But instead of opening with technical side, ask about the why. Why do you need this pipeline? What is the business objective? What is the deadline? What is this product for? You can do this for just about any general technical question they ask. Show your thinking about the product side before the technical side. Now, they might just be like, whatever, tell us how to make a pipeline. But you're sending a strong signal that you understand the bigger picture. If they don't want to play along and build out the full scenario, fill in the blanks yourself. Okay, well, if I'm building a pipeline for data science project and they need it at the end of the day in order to meet an emergency delivery requirement, then I'd probably do X, Y, Z and then break down your technical steps. And then you could compare that to the steps you take if you had a month to build something out. Also, don't forget you're interviewing them too. If they don't see the value in these answers, it might be something to take note of. When it comes to process, you'll probably get, have you ever done Scrum or Agile? And you should be able to answer this, but that might be the only question you get, despite the fact that most data engineering teams struggle with having good processes. So you wanna think about what organizational challenges teams commonly face and work them into your discussions. This is probably a good topic for another video. Like and comment if you wanna see that. But think about the full software development lifecycle, being clear that rushing something out will cause problems with poor requirements, poor QA, poor documentation, more bugs, more technical debt, that a full process should be considered to include all of those pieces. Even if you aren't responsible for managing that process, have examples on how you positively contribute to documentation, retrospectives, postmortems, and just day-to-day -day suggestions for continuous improvement. For leadership, it doesn't mean you have to be management or have seniority. Everyone can provide some level of leadership, even if it's just ownership of certain code or parts of a product. You can set a good example by following best practices, running meetings, and just stepping up and helping out where you can. And that's what good companies will want in all their employees, not just bodies typing at keyboards, but people who can take ideas and run with them. So have examples ready to mention projects you took full ownership of, presentations that you've led, and mentoring you've done. Also be sure to ask questions that display an eagerness to grow. Show that you're a capable leader, even if it's not your primary role. It's also important to understand the interview process from the other side of the table. You should watch this video on my experience as the interviewer to help get into the minds of the hiring managers. That way you can tailor your strategy for what they expect to get out of the interview.